if you have a relatively short time frame uh, to deal with, then searching for a lost civilization becomes much more complex and much more difficult. There are some secrets that will be passed down through the ages in the same way that certain locations are hidden by nature. But if you have a very long time frame to deal with, there's much more material to investigate. And the passage of time, never meant to be seen by people. Pompeii, a city preserved in ash. Nestled at the foot of Italy's Mount Vesuvius, the ancient city of Pompeii is one of the world's most important archaeological sites. Pompeii was remarkably well-preserved after being buried under a thick layer of pumice and volcanic ash during the disastrous eruption of the volcano in 79 CE. It offers an unparalleled window into Roman life in the first century AD. The magnificent eruption of Mount Vesuvius on August 24, 79 CE sent a cloud of pumice and volcanic ash into the sky. Nearby towns Herculaneum and Pompeii were engulfed in ash and rubble after the eruption, which emitted some 1.5 million tons of volcanic material every second. Many Pompeii residents were unable to flee the city before it was swiftly consumed by the eruption because they were taken by surprise. Many people died instantly because of the eruption's falling debris, heat, and poisonous gas. Those who were able to escape, though, left behind a city that seemed to have stood still, with the ruins of buildings, artifacts, and even people preserved in remarkable detail. Intricate mosaics, frescoes, and even commonplace objects were preserved by the volcanic ash. Amazing wall murals depicting mythological scenarios, landscapes, and everyday life were made by artists, and today's academics can admire these works for their insight into the aesthetic sensitivities of the period. Borobudur Borobudur is a world-renowned Buddhist temple and one of the holiest sites on the planet. Built between the 8th and 9th centuries, this magnificent temple complex is a religious and cultural landmark for Buddhists all over the world, as well as an architectural and artistic marvel. Its construction occurred during the time of the Buddhist Sailendra dynasty, which had great prosperity in Indonesia. It was probably between 780 and 840 CE, when the area was quite prosperous culturally and economically, that the temple was built. Originally intended as a place of pilgrimage, the monument now serves as a sacred space for Buddhists to perform ceremonies that honor the Buddha and his teachings. Despite Borobudur's illustrious spiritual past, the site has been neglected and has declined throughout the years. Abandoned and progressively buried in volcanic ash and thick vegetation, Borobudur fell into decay after the Sailendra dynasty's downfall and Islam's rise in Indonesia. Restoration attempts and a renewed interest in Borobudur didn't begin until the site was rediscovered by the Western world in the 19th century. The Lost Leaders of Jamestown As the first ever permanent English settlement in North America, Jamestown's founding in 1607 was an important moment in U.S. history. Nevertheless, the colony's growth was impacted by difficulties, leadership conflicts, and devastating losses during its early years. Notable among these occurrences were the disappearances or strange deaths of numerous influential figures who came to be known as lost leaders. Captain John Smith, one of the most famous people linked to Jamestown, was instrumental in the early colony's success. He established trade with the nearby Powhatan tribes and instituted a no-work, no-food policy to incentivize effort among the settlers, bringing order to the previously anarchic town. Disagreements arose among the settlers, even among the more esteemed members of society, over Smith's leadership. When Smith left Jamestown for England in 1609 because of a gunpowder explosion, the settlement took a turn for the worst. The settlement's stability was damaged, and tensions were amplified by his departure. Some of Jamestown's other early leaders met similarly unfortunate ends, while others simply vanished from history or died at an early age. Stunning Mosaics Uncovered Ancient City of Zugma Zugma, which dates to the 4th century BCE, had great architectural significance and served as a major military and commercial center. Mosaics discovered at the site have been the center of attention, 
shedding light on the creative accomplishments of the ancient world and offering valuable insights on the beliefs, everyday lives, and culture of the people who lived there. Beautiful mosaics graced the floors and walls of many of the city's notable buildings, which included temples, baths, theaters, and homes. The cultural and aesthetic influences of the period were evident in these mosaics made from small fragments of colorful glass or stones. The discovery of these mosaics in the ruins of opulent homes provides more evidence that they were commissioned by the well-to-do. Famous mosaics often depict scenes from mythology or history, while others feature elaborate geometric patterns. Impressive antique craftsmanship is on full display in the Gypsy Girl, one of the most renowned mosaics unearthed at Zugma. The mosaics from Zugma showcase the extraordinary skills of ancient craftspeople, such as the use of tesserae, which are tiny fragments of ceramic, glass, or stone that were painstakingly arranged to form complex designs. The use of colorful stones enabled artisans to achieve subtle gradations of hue and tone, adding depth and richness to the images. The mosaic's use of a variety of materials added to their amazing visual impact. Ritual Sacrifices in Bog Bodies Archaeologists, historians, and anthropologists have been captivated by the bog corpses phenomenon. Remarkably well-preserved human remains discovered in peat bogs across northern Europe for many years. Because of the specific chemical and climatic circumstances of bogs, these ancient people, who often belong to the late Iron Age to the early Middle Ages, show extraordinary preservation. While the artifact's preservation is intriguing to scientists, it is the cultural significance of these discoveries, especially those pertaining to ritual sacrifices, that provide light on the values, norms, and institutions of long-gone civilizations. Many of the remains found in bogs may have been sacrificed as part of a religious ceremony, rather than being victims of murder or accidents, according to archaeological data. According to other explanations, the objective of these sacrifices was to appease the gods, to make the land more fertile, or to guarantee the prosperity of the people. Intentional mutilation or post-mortem alterations, including amputated limbs or other body parts, are visible in many bog remains. A unique window into the beliefs and practices of ancient European communities can be seen in the bog remains and the evidence of ceremonial sacrifices connected with them. 700-year-old toilets. While modern ideas about cleanliness have come a long way, what little remains of our forebears' hygiene routines tell us a lot about how they lived. Among these artifacts are the 700-year-old toilet barrels, which are linked with Europe during the Middle Ages. Even though we take contemporary toilets for granted, these ancient sanitation systems tell us a lot about the cultures who used them and how they dealt with cleanliness, garbage, and public health. Different regions of Europe had vastly different sanitation systems in place during the Middle Ages. Overcrowding and insufficient waste disposal facilities were consequences of fast population expansion in urban areas. Traditional latrines were often made of humble materials and were called privies, or garderobes. Curiously, barrels served as public restrooms in several European towns for a while, particularly in locations with inadequate drainage systems or when space was at a premium. In their original form, the toilet barrels served as commodes. These barrels, made of wood and typically positioned over a hole, would hold human excrement. It would be required to empty the barrel after the contents had accumulated due to users squatting over it. The approach, however crude in comparison to modern methods, demonstrated an early awareness of the need of sanitation and an attempt to control garbage. Monumental Mysteries, Easter Island and Stonehenge. Massive man-made buildings have always fascinated and captivated people, whether as representations of spiritual importance, technological progress, or cultural identity. Among the world's most famous and mysterious landmarks are Easter Island and Stonehenge. The societies that made them, what they were for and where they came from, are all mysteries. Easter Island is well known for its Moai sculptures, which are enormous stone representations of the spiritual and cultural traditions of the island's inhabitants. The island is situated in the Southeast Pacific Ocean. Between the 8th and 12th century CE, Polynesian navigators inhabited the island, 
creating a distinct culture apart from the rest of the globe. The stone platforms called AHU supported the Moai sculptures, which could reach a height of 33 feet and a weight of 75 tons. The statues were sculpted from volcanic tuff. There is still much mystery surrounding how the Rapa Nui people accomplished the monumental task of creating and transporting these enormous sculptures. Stonehenge, another enormous English monument on the Salisbury Plain, has long captivated both tourists and academics. The circular arrangement of standing stones at this prehistoric monument, which dates to 3000 BCE to 2000 BCE, is renowned for its impressive size and exact alignment. How and why Stonehenge was built is the biggest mystery surrounding it. It is thought that stones for the monument came from as far away as Wales, which begs the issue of what methods the ancient people utilized and how much work went into building the structure. In addition to its obvious architectural value, Stonehenge stands as a symbol of enduring ties to long-forgotten religion, ceremony, and practice. The role of the site has long been a topic of academic discussion, with theories ranging from an astronomical observatory to a burial ground to a ceremonial site or a location for ceremonies connected to the agricultural calendar. Astronomical phenomena, such as the summer and winter solstices, coincide with the stone's alignment, lending credence to claims of heavenly importance. Europe's Cannibalism Throughout history, cannibalism, the practice of eating one's own kind, has both captivated and terrified people across the world. Throughout Europe's history, cannibalism has been mentioned, first in ancient times, then during the Middle Ages, and finally, in contemporary times. Myths, taboos, and ethical arguments typically accompany these situations, which reflects the intricacies of human conduct in relation to psychological factors, cultural customs, and the need to survive. Cannibalism may have been common among prehistoric Europeans, according to archaeological finds. Cut marks suggestive of butchering have been found with human remains at sites like Gug's Cave in England, which means that the flesh was likely devoured. These results suggest that early human populations may have resorted to cannibalism as a means of survival, especially in times of severe food shortage or ecological crisis. Also, the behavior could have spiritual or ritualistic underpinnings in anthropology. Based on their ideas about life and death, some prehistoric tribes may have resorted to cannibalism as a burial ritual or to draw power from their ancestors' bodies after they died. The Taong Skull In paleoanthropology, the discovery of the Taong Skull is among the most important findings, and it has been crucial to the comprehension of human evolution. This fossilized skull, which was found in a limestone quarry in Taong, South Africa, in 1924, is the earliest piece of evidence for a hominin species that would be formally named Australopithecus africanus. The Taong skull displays characteristics common to both humans and apes. Its modest brain size, around 400 to 500 cubic centimeters, places it in the same evolutionary bracket as modern apes. However, its smaller face and larger molar teeth point to an omnivorous diet. Because of its unique combination of characteristics, Australopithecus africanus is likely an important evolutionary link that demonstrates how primates gave way to hominins. Among the most notable features of the Taung skull is the orientation of the foramen magnum, the opening through which the spinal cord enters the brain. The bipedal nature of this early hominin is inferred by the placement of the foramen magnum in the Taung skull. An essential feature that differentiates early hominins from apes, bipedalism, shows a significant evolution in walking and adaption to the ground. Those who believed in a more linear, out-of-Asia genesis story for humans were among the first to doubt Dart's classification of the Taung skull as a hominin. There was mounting evidence that pointed to a more complicated evolutionary history encompassing numerous areas, especially Africa, and the finding of the Taung skull cast doubt on these established views. Atacama Skeleton Discovered in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile in 2003, the Atacama Skeleton, or Ata, is an intriguing and divisive artifact that has captivated scholars and the public. 
Several competing theories have been advanced to explain the origins, nature, and relevance of this diminutive, elongated skeleton, which is just around six inches long. The skeleton's little stature and unusual form first piqued people's interest, prompting questions over its possible identity and whereabouts. There have been heated discussions on the Atacama skeleton's identity as a human, a genetically modified person, or some other type of animal due to its unique anatomical characteristics. At a height of barely six inches, the skeleton is quite tiny. Some have drawn parallels to the condition of fetal or newborn remains because of this. But the skull looks more like an adult, with a prominent forehead and other characteristics that don't belong to a baby or fetus. The skeleton is riddled with abnormalities, such as an unusually small number of ribs and other peculiarities, which only serve to heighten the sense of mystery and intrigue around it. After analyzing the skeleton's genome, scientists discovered it was identical to that of a person, more precisely a member of the Chilean population. Science has ruled out alien or non-human origins, confirming that the skeleton is that of a human, prehistoric pedestrian. A remarkable find was uncovered in 2009 in New Mexico's White Sands National Park. The preserved footprints of ancient people that date back about 23,000 years. Incredible as it may seem, this discovery proves that people were traversing North America on foot far earlier than previously believed. New opportunities for archaeological and anthropological study have arisen because of these footprints. Discovered as a major archaeological site, the area's well-preserved prints were discovered by geologists studying the geology of the dry lake. The prints were embedded in the fine white gypsum sands. Instead of being a random assortment of imprints, these footprints formed a continuous trail that spoke to activity and movement across the terrain. The size variation of the prints indicates that they depict a broad collection of people, most likely including both adults and children. Our knowledge of North American human history is greatly affected by the finding of these imprints. The previously accepted wisdom was that the Clovis civilization, famous for its unique stone tools, was the principal group of people to reach North America about 13,000 years ago, but this discovery disproves that theory. This evidence delays the beginning of human occupancy by some 10,000 years. This throws doubt on long-held beliefs of the arrival of Europeans in the Americas and prompts new inquiries into the timing and manner of that migration. Tombs of Elite Wari Craftsmen Impressive artistic, architectural, and social accomplishments define the Wari Empire, which thrived from 600 to 1100 CE in the central highlands of what is now contemporary Peru. The Wari graves of top craftsmen are among the most important archaeological finds connected to this ancient civilization because they reveal important information about its politics, economy, and culture. The Wari were well known for their exquisite handiwork, which included textiles, ceramics, metals, and built marbles. They created a distinctive and easily identifiable aesthetic by combining different artistic traditions from different parts of the Andes, which paved the way for other Andean civilizations. The Andes are rife with the sites of aristocratic Wari craftsmen's tombs, most notably at the mountaintop sites of Piquilacta and Corral Pampa. The high social rank and economic significance of the people buried in these tombs are attested to by the abundance of valuable burial artifacts found within, such as rare and beautiful fabrics, ceramics, and tools. Sutton Hoo. Archaeological evidence unearthed at Sutton Hoo, one of England's most important sites, sheds light on medieval Britain and the post-Roman Anglo-Saxon society that developed there. The site is famed for its unusual burial mounds, which are in the estuary of the River Deben in Suffolk. The most famous mound has an enigmatic ship burial that is thought to be that of a high-status individual, possibly a king or nobleman. Sutton Hoo is a burial ground that has been occupied from the beginning of the 7th century CE, during the Anglo-Saxon period, when England was undergoing profound change. As the Roman Empire waned in Britain, new power dynamics and cultural innovations evolved because of the proliferation of kingdoms. This time had a pivotal role in molding Anglo-Saxon culture through its trade, wars, and religious reform. 
The early Anglo-Saxon kingdom of East Anglia is believed to have been linked to Sutton Hoo. The burial's lavishness and the site's strategic location near the River Deben both point to its strategic importance for commerce and warfare. Sutton Hoo Helmet As a symbol of the craftsmanship, social order, and cultural beliefs of the Anglo-Saxon period, the Sutton Hoo Helmet stands out among the most famous items from the early Middle Ages in England. This extraordinary helmet, unearthed in 1939 during excavations at the Sutton Hoo burial site in Suffolk, provides priceless clues about the early medieval European world and the lives of the Anglo-Saxon nobility. A plethora of grave goods, including the helmet, shields, jewelry, and complex artifacts were unearthed from the ship's tomb, all of which indicate that the individual buried there was of high importance. The burial at Sutton Hoo is typically placed around 625 CE, which places it around the time when the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms were expanding their territories, fighting each other, and solidifying their governmental institutions. The Terracotta Army, Silent Guardians of the Afterlife. The Terracotta Army is a remarkable artifact that showcases the greatness of ancient Chinese culture and ranks among the most remarkable archeological finds ever made. Thousands of life-size figurines designed to follow Qin Shi Huang, China's first emperor, in his afterlife were found in 1974 near Xi'an in Shanxi province and make up the Terracotta Army. The history of this extraordinary tomb complex and the artwork, culture, and beliefs of the Qin dynasty can be better understood by studying these silent guardians. Qin Shi Huang started building an ornate tomb complex in anticipation of his death which he thought would allow him to live forever. Incorporating the terracotta army into this expansive tomb was the intention of ensuring the emperor's safety in the hereafter. Approximately 700,000 people toiled on the structure, which housed the army, and a plethora of other figures and relics meant to assist the emperor in his afterlife. There are almost 8,000 life-size figurines in the terracotta army, depicting various military troops, horses, chariots, and more. The intricate details of each figure represent the various positions and responsibilities within the army. Soldiers' varied poses, attire, and attitudes highlight the rich diversity of the Qin army, and the variety is breathtaking. It is quite astounding how the terracotta army was crafted. The figures were meticulously molded from clay found in the area. Artists used cutting-edge methods to capture every detail, down to the complex hairstyles, precise military insignia, and realistic facial features. Shadat number six, Homo Naledi. A long-lost hominin called Homo Naledi was unearthed in South Africa's rising star cave system, close to Johannesburg in 2013. Paleoanthropologist Lee Berger oversaw the study team that made this discovery. Originating from the Sotho word Naledi, meaning star in English, the species' name alludes to the cavern's proximity to the night sky. The implications for human evolution and the peculiar mix of modern and primitive anatomy that Homo naledi possesses make it an important taxonomic candidate. The location of the fossils, which is commonly known as the Dinaledi chamber, is one of the most abundant places for hominin fossils that have been uncovered so far. Ancient Ibaloi Fire Mummies Native to the Philippine province of Benguay, the Ibaloi are famous for their unique funeral rituals and illustrious cultural history. The Ibaloi's fascinating technique of making fire mummies sheds light on their views of the afterlife and life on Earth, as well as their distinctive social structures and beliefs. The Ibaloi had the belief that the afterlife would be more tranquil for the dead if they were well cared for, in contrast to many societies that just buried them. The preservation of the body through fire mummification allowed for meticulous handling of the remains after death. After the corpse had dried out enough, the Ibaloi would hold ceremonies in memory of the dead, inviting those who had come to pay their respects. The communal character of Ibaloi society is shown in the frequent participation of relatives in memorial rituals and the presentation of offerings. After being mummified in a fire, the corpse would be laid to rest in a tomb or burial chamber with other possessions meant to aid the soul on its journey to the afterlife. 
Gobekli Tepe. One of the most remarkable archaeological finds of the modern era is Gobekli Tepe in southern Turkey. This location has revolutionized our knowledge of the Neolithic era, social evolution, and the function of religion throughout human history. It is frequently called the earliest temple in the world. Gobekli Tepe, which dates to roughly 9000 BCE, is nearly 6,000 years older than Stonehenge and about 7,000 years older than the Great Pyramids of Giza. Although the location of Gubekli Tepe was recognized as an archaeological site in the 1960s, it was not until the mid-1990s that substantial excavations commenced, spearheaded by German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt. Several enormous circular enclosures were constructed by enormous stone pillars at the site, with several of these pillars included intricate carvings of animals, abstract symbols, and forms that resemble humans. The age and intricacy of Gobekli Tepe's construction set it distinct from other archaeological sites, hence making it an extremely important archaeological find. The Lost City of Tania For a long time, the ancient city of Tania, founded within the framework of Greek mythology and history, has fascinated historians and archaeologists. Settlers from Corinth, Greece, founded the city of Tania, which is said to have been the birthplace of numerous legendary Greek individuals. The city faded into oblivion as time passed, and its exact location became a matter of heated controversy. According to Greek mythology, the aftermath of the Trojan War is commonly linked with Tania. Relatives of the Trojans, who were enslaved by the Greeks, supposedly founded the city, according to ancient records. Instead of going back to Troy after their release, these people decided to establish in a new area that would later be called Tania. The cultural significance of Tania as a city steeped in the mythology of the Trojan War was enhanced by this mythological backdrop. Located close to the present-day Greek village of Tania, a group of archaeologists from the University of Athens made an announcement in 2012 regarding the finding of what they thought to be the ancient city of Tania. Archaeological digs uncovered a wealth of information about the city's past, including walls, house foundations, burial sites, artifacts, and inscriptions. Several graves were unearthed, each containing pottery, bronze items, and other burial goods that attested to the city's prosperity and cultural ties. Further evidence of the occupants' religious activity and their relationships to the surrounding towns came from inscriptions that mentioned local cults and gods. One reason for Tania's cultural importance is the legendary aspects linked with it, especially its Trojan past. How the ancient Greeks saw their own past, present, and future can be gleaned from the myths and tales that surround its establishment. Antikythera Mechanism The Antikythera Mechanism is among the most astounding archaeological finds of the 20th century. It is believed that the Antikythera Mechanism came from the Eastern Mediterranean, maybe on a voyage from a prosperous city-state like Rhodes to Rome, and was discovered among the wreckage of a ship. The Hellenistic civilization saw great strides in philosophy, mathematics, and science during the time the mechanism was being constructed. Notable minds like Archimedes and Hipparchus were paving the way for technical advancements by expanding their knowledge of mathematics, mechanics, and astronomy. Once housed in a wooden case, the Antikythera mechanism is now made of bronze. The mechanism's intricate gear arrangement, with more than 30 gears, made it possible to follow heavenly bodies with pinpoint accuracy. By utilizing understanding of the solar year and lunar cycles, it could forecast the locations of the sun and moon, as well as lunar phases and eclipses. It is thought that the Antikythera mechanism may have tracked the motions of the five known planets, together with the sun and moon, while contemporary interpretations are currently exploring the device's complete possibilities. I could never have imagined in my wildest dreams that so many hidden treasures existed. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.